God, here we go. Hey, everyone. What's crack a We're back. Hello. Hi. Um, so I read a lot of the comments, and you guys are pretty uh, vicious today. Um, so let me talk about uh, some things first. Uh, first off, a lot of you guys are complaining about the safe state. Um, the reason why I'm using the safe state is not because I can't do it. I think you got... You, hold, hold on. You guys saw me play Kaizo Mario, and yet you think that me playing Mario 1 is difficult? I think that's a, I gotta, I gotta fight you on that because I'm doing it out of this, out of the interest of time because I think everyone would much rather see me play, you know, different games as opposed to this let's play of Mario one being a, uh, you know, eight episode arc of me failing the same six levels over and over again. And mind you, we still have all of the, the all star, the, uh, Mario, uh, Mario lost levels and three to go. So uh, that's why I'm using the safe state. It's not that I can't do it. I did it for the video, and I, it's Mario One One. I feel like everyone can do Mario One. I I don't know. I I'm I'm gonna I'm sticking to my guns on this because I don't want this to be a long enough series as it is. So uh, that's that's what I'm I'm sticking to it. It's not a matter of I can't do it. I've I think I have proved myself over 106 episodes that I can play any game that gets thrown at me, I think it's pretty feasible to say that I can handle Mario 1 and Mario Lost Levels. I just, I won't even mind using, not even using a safe state on Mario Lost Levels because they at least let you start over per level. But in Mario 1, you have to start over from the beginning of the world. And it's a it's a time waster. So that's why, sorry if I seem a little heated. I was like really excited to film some, some uh, JFP and then I read the comments. A lot of you guys were being a little haterade-ish. So... Hey, if you want me to play Tales of Symphonia and Chrono Trigger and all those games that you want me to play, that's fine. But if that's the case, then, you know, we got to finish this or else we're going to be playing Mario All-Stars Pack number 155. So, again, uh, a lot of you guys said they'd rather just stick to these as my vlogs then. That's fine. I don't care. It was, They were not for me. That's the thing. It's not for me. It's for you guys. So, yeah, there you go. And with that said, I apologize if I sound a little hasty-ish today. Uh, let's get happy. I, I'm, I am happy. I had a great weekend. I'm I'm well rested. I'm ready to go with more games and completing, uh, more editing, more things to do. Um, I'm probably going to die right now, but that's okay. No pinky. You don't get any of that. Um, goal today is to try and start the... Uh, just try and start the lost levels, providing that uh, I get there. But we will we will see. I'm I'm not so sure. Um, yeah, how's everyone doing today? Uh, I'm trying to think of what's relevant to talk about today. Uh, Borderlands reviews came out. I think uh, for the Borderlands pre sequel, um, that definitely came out. My safe stand are they apparently they don't want to work right now. Bayonetta two, two reviews are out. Um, yeah, fun fact, a Nintendo gave me Bayonetta 1 and 2. I was going to do a completionist episode. Uh, I thought about it, at least, rather. Um, see? It, no, now now they don't want me to use the safe state, so I'm not going to use the safe state. That's what you, that's what you guys wanted. So here we go. Um, <laughs> that's what everyone wants. Um, so, yeah, Bayonetta 1 and 2 came... Uh, our, I received them both. Um, and they are fun. I was going to do a completionist review, but I, one, it's like, I, I, I don't want to ever review a game where I have to, uh, when I'm, when I haven't done the first one yet, I feel like I should do both or like, I shouldn't like review Bayonetta 2 without playing Bayonetta 1. Um, I, the exception is Crash Bandicoot 2, uh, because Crash Bandicoot 1, I, I, I just don't really care for, um, and I started with Crash Bandicoot 2 first as a kid, and I wanted it to be authentic as possible for me um, when I went to go play to review it. So that's kind of what I stuck to with that. Um, but yeah, so I decided to pass on it. I decided to pass on it because of my health, because uh, I am not doing too great uh, with my 
with my uh, not just diet, but my sleeping and eating habits have been kind of bad. Uh, nosebleeds, headaches, things like that. Um, I'm fine for now. I went to the doctor and I'm going to find out more next week. So don't you all worry. I'm sure I'm going to be okay. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what, uh, Bayonetta one and two, uh, why they're not getting a completion episode just yet. I'd love to do them soon. Uh, I've been waiting for Bayonetta one for Wii U cause I really wanted to play it on the Wii U rather than PS3 or Xbox. Um, cause I know that they're going to add a lot more to it content wise, and especially with all the cool costumes cause both the costumes are playable on both games. So that'll be really exciting to see. Um, especially cause I like costumes and I love that Easter egg type stuff. So yeah, uh, the prequel sequel to, Be- to Borderlands came out that are uh, the game comes out tomorrow. I think, um, I'm a big Borderlands guy. I've been waiting a long time to do Borderlands 2. I don't know how I feel about uh, the pre-sequel. I, I honestly don't. Um, I don't know how to feel about it, rather. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate what they are doing with the franchise. I, I just want to... I feel like I should... I don't know. I feel like too much Borderlands might be a bad thing, if that's if that makes sense. Oh, God, get out of here. Get... Oh, come on. Oh, I mean, it hasn't, it hasn't been that long since Borderlands 2 came out. We had a, a bigger gap between Borderlands 1 and 2, but Borderlands, uh, the prequel, um, came out about 18 months. No, about two years, almost two years. So maybe it's been enough time. I don't know. I personally feel like the Borderlands world is still, you know, it's still in existence and doesn't necessarily need more expanding. But that's maybe that's just me. Um I also think that they didn't have enough in a, of, I mean, from what I've seen so far, they didn't really improve enough. Uh, instead of like, you know, I, I can say what you will about Assassin's Creed and how they're repetitive, but at least every Assassin's Creed, just for my own sanity, not that I'm going to need to use it. Um, ah, great. Three years. Three years. Okay, so three years between Borderlands 1 and 2 and two years for the pre-sequel and, and 2. Um I do like the fact that it follows that the the, the villain uh, Jack uh, as like his kind of rise to power. That's really neat. I also like the characters you can play as. Um, but I feel like there's not enough time. I feel like there's not enough time to kind of invest in what Borderlands 2, considering that there was a lot of DLC that heavily expanded the universe of the game. And uh, oof, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Yeah, we also have a Telltale Borderlands game coming out. You know, I it's, there's a lot of Borderlands content. And not that it's not good or that, you know, we don't need any more. But uh, if we're going to get more Borderlands content, uh, I wanted to fix the issues that we had with the with the first two games. Um, as opposed to, uh, you know, kind of fixing them. Or adding things to, like, try and fix them, but not really addressing the real problems. Um so yeah, I think that's really all in gamer news that I can really talk about on my own personal personal opinion. Um, oh man, feels like I just did this yesterday. When really it's been a while. Did you see how good Bayonetta's reviews are? Yeah, everyone, everyone's been loving Bayonetta. And I, I have to say, uh, I am one of the ones that do. I've been playing it and it's a blast. And I'm, I'm very happy for Platinum Games. Platinum Games makes some pretty crazy games. And I'm really happy to see that they're seeing a lot of the success uh, with Bayonetta 2. Considering that the game wasn't going to happen. You know, the, Bayonetta 2 was going to be the game that people, you know, wanted to get on. You know, Nintendo stepped in and said, hey, we will pay for the game if it's a Wii U exclusive. And that's that's pretty cool because it's either, you know, it's that or it doesn't happen at all. And I think that they, good on Nintendo for for sticking out for Platinum Games. Yeah, a lot of people are still angry, and it's like, guys, okay, so either get a Wii U or don't play the game. Simple as that. And I think that's the, that's you have to make these sacrifices and these changes when there's not enough money and people involved. And I think that's that's the big problem when it comes to games that game sequels that get turned into exclusive. Dead Rising, I don't think that was the question. Dead Rising Three was going to be made no matter what. I think that uh, Microsoft probably paid more money to keep it exclusive. Um, and that's a different situation. That's, that's a different question and different, uh, conversation altogether, but it's definitely not in this case when you, uh, have Bayonetta, 
uh, just because it wasn't going to happen. It literally was not going to happen, and they forked the money over to make it happen. And Nintendo's proud of it, you know? And that's the thing. This is like a first... It may be a second-party title with Sega and Platinum Games on board, but it's also an M-rated game on a Wii U. You, there are... And Nintendo that is, like, officially marketing and embracing as one of their own, which is pretty impressive, you know, especially in 2014, considering how far Nintendo was, you know, a few years ago. Sure, they had problems with with the launch of the Wii U, but you know what? They're not telling you to shake your remotes anymore. They're actively working to make their brand better, and I think they're doing a great job. So... It's a very M-rated game, yeah. It's the kind of game that the more you complete, the more close she loses. Um, and, you know, people will complain all they want that, you know... I think the the big controversy right now is that Polygon made a review that docked points because it was, like, too sexy. Um, I don't know if that... I, that's interesting. Um, very weird. Because Bayonetta, for as sexy as she is, she's incredibly, like, powerful and powerful. strong. Yeah. Very strong female. Yeah, she, yeah, I mean, but the thing is, though, too, okay, so let's, I guess this is the safe discussion. Does the hero, whether it be female or male, need to be good looking? You know, like that's an important conversation to have. That's what this whole debate of like, you know, tropes versus women in gaming, that's what like everything stems down to is does our protagonist need to be good looking? Now, we know that the antagonist can be ugly. You know, we had games where the antagonist is just like an evil being or like an evil, weird-looking thing. You know, aliens, monsters. Uh, so that, that's not necessarily a, a, an opinion or matter when it comes to the antagonist. But does the protagonist need to be good-looking? Um, and I'm sure there's some out there that are like, people will argue, oh, they're, they're not good-looking. But I mean, are we talking like, fair, you know, like fairy character type things? Like, Crash Bandicoot isn't like attractive, but he's cute. He's, he's a, uh, oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Lord, 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 I am lord. Uh, <laughs> South Park. Um, yeah. Oh, come on. The other way. Yeah, like, is, 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 uh... Crash Bandicoot is necessarily attractive. Not really. It's cute. It's it's a little, you know, is Shrek attractive? God, no. But Shrek has become cute to a lot of people. And I think that that's kind of what it comes down to when you create a, a protagonist, someone that is uh, cute and relatable. I'm sure that there are some protagonists that uh, are ugly that we know of. I, I'm, I'm trying to, I can't really think of any that are just like, that'd be an interesting thing to look at. Quasimodo, there we go. Well, Quasimodo, though, I feel like it's not necessarily a, a video game protagonist, but it is. it does fall in the line of a protagonist that is ugly. Um, which, But then again, that's kind of what the whole, the whole film is about. The whole film is about, or play, or folklore story, whatever you want to call it, um, Disney cartoon, is about... Death is about that struggle of, of dealing with, with being hideous and, um, you know... Ugly, I guess. It's just it's, I hate that word. Um, but yeah, I get no. Uh, well, that was great. Um, so who else? I'm trying to think of ugly protagonists. Let me know who your ugly protagonist, who your ugly, who your protagonists are that you think aren't very attractive, but you relate to them. That's the important thing. And I think that coming back full circle to our conversation of Bayonetta is that um, Bayonetta. If she was not sexy, would she be attract? Would she still be relatable and attractive? Um, I think so, but um, it's th the universe of Bayonetta is supposed to be like hypersexualized. It's not like Bayonetta is the only one that looks sexy. Like any other female in the game is sexy. Um, most of the males in the game are like, oh god, no. Um, most <laughs> that was really funny. Um, most of the the f the males in the game are relatively, you know beefcakes yeah yeah or you, whatever it needs to be whatever whatever the you know and and whatever i think that it goes both ways it's definitely that whole thing of you know it's not like the men aren't sexualized either they are sexualized um and does that necessarily change the perception dude is is someone sitting in you know at home gonna buy bayonetta 2 and be like Man, I'm so bummed that Bayonetta is not sexy. I don't think so. I think that if you are, um, you know, actively creating your character with that in mind, uh, 
people aren't going to play your game. Simple as that. But I think I think that's where it's at. I think that you know your your protagonist needs to be good. You know, from their from their fiber to well being, do they need to be cute? I I think so. They need to be somewhat attractive for you to to you know want to play as them. If Mario was a troll, I don't think that he would uh, be a very you know relatable character people want to play. Squ- SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, he is a sponge that lives in this in a pineapple under the sea, but he's adorable as hell. So the people personify or, or, or personify is the right word, right? They personify these characters to look. Uh, more relatable, more appealing to, you know, different audiences. And I think that's what works. And I think that's what people don't understand about some gaming protagonists is that it's not about them looking like beefcake. It's about them matching the world that they're in, matching the chaos they're in. And whether or not they're attractive or not is kind of like subjective. It doesn't really matter. I don't play games to play as a hot, busty woman. I play games to like, you know, explore this crazy ass world that is full of destruction and death. And, and that sounds way darker than it is. Um, but I play for the adventure. I play for the story and I play for the quest of, you know, what's going to happen to our, to our hero or heroes, depending on what game you're playing. And you also, you look at like Pikachu started off very chubby and yeah. P- you know, and now he's like pretty slender. Yeah. Pikachu started off as a little morbid rat. That's like, you know, cute and fat but now it's like pikachu is legitimately a thinner uh model of of himself and i think he's only gotten skinnier over the years based on his renditions uh and that and i I don't think anyone i'm pretty sure there's not like a bulimia study on on pikachu i hope yeah right I, i don't think that's an actual thing i don't think anyone wants that to be an actual thing i would hope to god no one wants that to be an actual thing um but I, character models get revamps all the time, you know? Um, oh, you know, who... I'm trying to think. Mario. Yeah, Mario's changed over the years tremendously. Look at the game we're playing right now. This Mario sprite looks way different than the Mario sprite we got in the original, you know, NES days. Especially when we go from Baby Mario, or Baby Mario, Small Mario to Big Mario. It's a huge difference. Whew, wow, so much, so much talking today. So much talking. How are we doing on time? Doing okay? Okay. About I feel like I'm moving slow today. I did so much faster last time. And I was like in morning Gerard mode. Yeah, it is harder, isn't it? It's supposed to be. Oh. Platforms are smaller than all the games are. Oh, really? The platforms are smaller? That's what it is? Yeah. Oh, no. We're back here? Yeah. I died. And people don't want me to save state, so... That's no, I, you know, I'm, I'm being firm about it. I'm being real. That's what people, that's what they want. So I, I was in the assumption that we should like move forward. But if, if, I mean, a lot of people were saying it, right? Yeah. Yeah. This would be JFP 17. How about if we go finish this game by JFP 20? That means no, no Chrono Trigger and no Tales of the Boat. No, no, it's fine. I, I, uh, again, I, I don't, if, if that's what people want, they want to see me do it, then that's fine. I, I just think that there's a, there are better ways than 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 attacking me the way that you guys did, especially because I am pretty actively reading what you guys say. But that's okay. That is okay. I'm doing what you guys want, and there you go. That means if you visually get to see the same thing over and over again. But I, you know, I guess that's the whole point of the struggle, right? That's the point of seeing someone do it. But I, I think it's different for some games. Like you know, look at Northern Lion. He's been doing a let's play of the Binding of Isaac for for years now. He's on like part 1000, but the point is, is that every single part that he does of it, I mean, cause that's what the game is. There's, there's, there's different experiences. There's different things to find. There's different things to kind of go on in Mario one. There's not really that much. It's just a matter of trial and repeat. Um, yeah. And we're not, we're doing a no warp pipe run. Um, you know, I, again, I wasn't trying to like get out of not completing the game. That's not the point of the series. I just wanted to optimize time because I figure everyone else wants to not see me do the same levels so many different times. Because, you know, what if I... It's different when I'm playing Mario World because there's visually different worlds. And eventually I get past it. But it's like seeing me play the same three to four levels over and over and over and over again in several parts. But anyways, let's just move past it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it for you guys like you said. Like you asked. Like you demanded. 
<sighs> Man. What do we got going on this week, completionist-wise? Ninja Gaiden's coming out on Friday. Ninja Gaiden 1 for the NES. Not not the remake. The remake will take me too long. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm really good at the remake. I, it was one of the few Xbox original games I completed. And I did complete it because I loved it a lot. Um, but I... Oh, no. That's different. I feel. Oof. Um... There we go. Come on. There we go. There we go. Oof. No, 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 no. The, the rocket man. Oh, yeah. There was also another comment I remember reading saying about for hard mode to get used to like your down trajectory and how to handle it. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, you're going to need to do that more just because of how it is. I got you. I remember that. It's pretty... Oof. Oh yes, I forget. Oh man, oh, I got to turn this up so I can hear the pattern. Might be too loud. Let's see. That was wrong, huh? Yeah, okay. That's one. I think the next one is... Is it the very bottom? Yeah. Here we go. Did you guys finish Fatal Frame? Uh, I can't disclose that. <laughs> I cannot talk about that. I cannot talk about Scary Game Squad. Thank you guys also for subbing to Super Scope. They wrote me a very nice uh, text message and slash email the other day when they saw a massive spike increase in subs. Oh, really? Yeah, so thank you guys for checking them out. We yeah, really appreciate it. Yeah, a lot of people were saying how uh, not only do they not always exist, but they don't really know about much else that exists. Um, so in case you don't know, here's your... I mean... Informa informative opinion, I guess. I don't know. Announcement. Um, ooh. You know what? As a kid, I always thought those were wings. I always thought they were wings. It wasn't until this version where I saw they were animated. Um, this came after Super Mario World, so that's why they're not animated Super Mario World. Oop, I just hit the microphone. Great. Why am I doing that? Oh, Lordy. Lord, Lord, Lord. I am Lord. <laughs> so dumb. Um, yeah, so uh, in case you, you guys know what we do now, but, you know, there's the Completionist, which is my, me and Greg's channel. Then you got the Dex, which is mostly Alex and, and Jimmy and uh, Kel's channel. I'm the executive producer, which just means that my money pays for the labor and stuff like that that goes into each episode. Um, and then uh, Super Scope is our newest one, which is I'm also I'm I'm, all, I'm more of a creative director on Super Scope. I help. Oh damn it! What a horrible horrible jump. Um, which just means that I I'm a lot more hands on with Super Scope. I come up with a lot of the jokes. I come up with a lot of the concepts. Um, I mean I used to rather. I I haven't done that since the beginning, but I helped formulate the structure. I helped come up with the branding and. Uh, the theme songs was Greg's aspect of it. And so uh, I kind of was like the one that came up with the initial idea of, of like what the channel could be about, but Greg and, and those guys were really the ones that finessed it. I'm just not paying attention today. Um, yeah. So <sighs> beard bros obviously is what is our, is our, I'd say if we ranked them, this would be our third channel. Even though this one became came before uh, the decks, this started I think a few. Ah, damn it, started a few months after the decks or before the decks. I know math and science and all that stuff. Oh my god! Great Gerard syndrome. Great, 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 great. Dun dun. 
Yeah, in case you guys were wondering about why there's no Smash Bros. this weekend, uh, a lot of our partners who wanted to come help film, they ran out of time during their week for scheduling. So unfortunately, we did not have anyone to film. And I was in Las Vegas for the weekend for my bachelor party. So my bachelor party for a friend's bachelor party for a bachelor party that I'm involved in. Um, oh, what a bummer. I felt like that was... There we go. I'm not going to die in the same spot. Oh, no, 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 no. Go up, go up, go up. Go up. Ugh. Oof. Shroom, 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 shroom. No, not the descent, not the descent. Okay. There we go. Oh, no. There we go. We're good, we're good, we're good. There we go. 5-3. I think my goal is to get to 6 today. And then tomorrow, we'll, or whenever we film next, we'll do uh, 6, 7, 8. And then move on to uh, the lost levels, which surprisingly enough it looks the exact same as this game. Ugh, lovely Gerard. Do 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 do. Ooh, get out of here! <sighs> no 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 no. Doon to doon do. Oh, I'm dead. The slow descent. This is the number one killer of me in this game. I don't it's oh come on, come on. Oof, I did not make that. Alright. I'm not complaining on that edge. And I have to beat this on one life. I can probably do it. Just gotta take my time. Not freak out and just do it as we do. Oh, well, I'd love to get that shroom, but... <sighs> Back to the beginning of World 5. I always love how happy the clouds look. So that's that something they do. Is that something they do in, in current Mario games? Happy clouds? I feel like they do that. <laughs> Jimmy says it's some Bob Ross. Shit. Do you guys know who Bob Ross is? Let me know. Hashtag who's Bob Ross. That's that's the hashtag for today. Who's Bob Ross? Send me a photo of him. Bob Ross had a Wii game? That can't be real. Or like they were making one or something? I don't think so. He died if he's still alive. Bob Ross is dead? Yes. Oh no. What a depressing world now. This is why you can't tell me things live on camera because now I get sad. <laughs> he died 20 years ago <laughs> and now I'm all sad <laughs> oh my <laughs> no one told me if Bob Ross died he died he died when I <laughs> he died when I was six <laughs> no one told me I didn't even know who he was at that point. I could have known him. I don't even know if that was the right math, by the way. If he died 20 years ago, I'm 26. Yeah, when I was six, right? That's good math. Tell me that's math. Is it nine years ago, like my own galaxy? Screw you. <laughs> Apparently I said nine instead of seven years. I can't do math. Ugh. At least I made it to the end of the level. Do 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 do. Oh, that's so funny. He died twenty years ago. You know, you know why I think I, you know why I I didn't think he died because I still see so many of his videos on television. And like Family Guy, Robot Chickens. Everyone still everyone still references him. So I thought he was still alive this whole time, still painting shit. 
I mean, yeah. Wouldn't you wouldn't you think he's still alive? I mean, I guess it's not true because you get Michael Jackson nowadays, and that's unfortunate though. Oh, and I got sad again thinking about Michael Jackson. I gotta stop thinking about dead people. I love how the animation of Mario in his stomach, his the cans never leave his overalls. Oh, the slow descent. See if I can do it. No, I'm, I'm no, I'm good. Uh, of course. Well, I'm at the end, so whatever. I made it. <sighs> All right. Let's not die. Five four. Yeah, I'm not gonna make it, am I? Nope. I try. Well, great. Great, 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 great. Okay. Here we go. I'm being calm, I'm being cool, I'm being collective. I thought I could just jump over into those things. That was super unfortunate. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, all right. Okay. Woof. Lunchtastic. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? That's that's why I wanted to use the safe state because I, I I thought that it would just help optimize everything, but oh well, I learned my lesson. What time is it? Maybe we can go one more. It was Bob Ross. Cast when did Bob Ross die? It's the question of the day. <laughs> the answer is twenty years ago. Also, shout out to uh, all you guys who actually did send vines uh, about uh, asking your parents. Uh, yeah, e Esteban's the best because his mom doesn't speak English. And so he asked his mom in Spanish and his mom just like was so confused. <laughs> Yeah. I'm still going. I'm going to go till I die. Hashtag rapper's delight. That's not a real hashtag. It's not really. Rap, rapper's delight is a, is a real song. It was definitely out when I was a kid. Ooh, no, no, I'm dead. All right. Next time on uh, Gerard finally doesn't freak out over nothing. Um, we'll go ahead and finish out the uh, Mario, ha second half Second half? Yeah, second half of uh, Mario 1 hard mode. All right. Bye, guys. Later, man.